get out here every Thursday night. No matter where you're listening to it, do the appropriate work. Like it, share it, subscribe, and comment. Ow. What's going on, kids? As usual, coming without a script. I'm going to show you how to find me, what I've been putting up on the platforms, as usual. <laughs> and hopefully a few clips that you haven't seen already. If you're already a fan of my Facebook or a follower on Twitter or any of that, this may be repetitive, repetitive. but... Just in case you're not, we're going to play you some clips. I didn't see this one yet. I only heard, maybe I saw a clip of it. I haven't, I'm watching this for the first time with you. I'm hoping you'll find it as offensive as I do. What? Smoke another one, AOC. What up? For you, just about the work environment you find yourselves in. Uh, you, you, had, you had spoken on Instagram about the real fear you had uh, 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 during that day, January 6th. Um, subsequently, uh, someone was arrested uh, who had uh, called to assassinate AOC. Um, there have been um, uh, Congressman Hakeem Jeffries was on the program last night talking about his family member receiving text saying, we're coming for you, we're outside your house. Mm -hmm. um, how do you understand? <laughs> the nature of the caucus of the Republican Party that you serve with right now in the aftermath of this and the, the vote they took to overturn the election and this desire to, quote, turn the page? Yeah, you know, I actually sense a profound difference between the Republican caucus of last term, the 115th co uh, Congress, and the Republican caucus that of this term that we are now, what, a few weeks into at this point. Um, and that difference was that it really felt that last term, the Republican caucus was one of extreme fealty to Donald Trump. Um, there were some that were true believers, um, others that simply remained quiet out of cowardice mm -hmm. um, and out of fear of the president's retribution. Um, but this term, there are legitimate white supremacist sympathizers that sit at the heart and at the core of the Republican caucus in the House. Okay, so first of all, how do you let someone get along? Get along. How do you let someone get away with saying this on your network? What did you just say? This term the sympathizers that sit at the heart and at the core of the of the president's retribution. Um, but this term, there are legitimate white supremacist sympathizers that sit at the heart and at the core of the Republican caucus. Like, I don't get it. Unity, tolerance, bipartisanship. Ugh. Are they just buzzwords? I get that it, yeah, there's polarization. I get it. But this is just straight up um, hogwash. <laughs> I guess. I don't know. Show me which congressman person was elected by being a white supremacist. It's ridiculous to keep perpetuating the narrative that we're all white supremacists. If you're white, you, uh, you have privilege. <laughs> it's distasteful and tiresome. And these guys promote it every night on these channels, MSNBC, CNN, ABC, CBS, <laughs> NBC, like, you name it. The only ones that have any fun and have a little bit of humor and have some entertaining shows, and it's not all doom and gloom, and wait till I show you the the new style of CNN. I mean, it's still fear. 
every night on every network, nothing but indoctrination, race baiting, and division. In the House of Representatives. And when you see someone like the, like the, the House Minority Leader, Kevin McCarthy of the Republican Party, uh, respond to white supremacist vitriol coming from his own members, not with censure like they did with um, Representative Steve King of Iowa, um, not with you know being stripped of committees, not with any consequence. You have to wonder where who actually has that power, and it increasingly seems, unfortunately, that in the House Republican Caucus. Kevin McCarthy answers to these QAnon members of Congress, not the other way around. And um, that is something that frankly needs to be said. You know, he said he was going to pull Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene aside. I don't know. I can't take much of this woman, as you can see. I'm not a big fan, but can you taste the drama, both in the question and the answer? Does it feel like acting to you? If it does, there's a good reason for that, because that's what these people are. They're performance artists and it's sad anyway i just uh, saw that one they were playing it on newsmax on one of their news programs i'm watching that a lot well not a lot but when i'm watching news i'm catching newsmax i'm catching fox i'm still going to cnn i very seldom go over here to msnbc because they're horrific Richard Maddow, whatever his name is. Oh, dear. That's not kind. I uh, actually tried to get away by doing a six-minute hit this morning and recording it as the Jim Fannin Show Live for Thursday night. <laughs> I knew it wouldn't fly. It didn't fly with me, so I scrapped it. And so here I am. Okay. Here's where you can find us at TrueTube. Uh, Maxime Bernier was one of my last guests. One of my last guests. As was George Stanwick was uh, my last guest. But um, Maxime, I had before that Mad Max of the People's Party of Canada. And if you go to True.Tube, there's no .com, .ca. It's True.Tube. Dot .Tube. Get it? True.Tube. You can see how... You can get linked up to some of the conversations. It's a work in progress. It hasn't been officially launched yet. But is it? it is operational. Operational? Operational. That's what we're going with. Uh, this is going to be a quick hit. Um, I am your pimp in the box. <laughs> I haven't said that for a while. Uh, let's see. Okay. I have been struck down again by the mammoth Google and the censorious YouTube struck with safety guidelines, medical information. I am guilty of community guideline strike, which is only a warning for me, kids. Presently on this channel, I have a clean record. I had a couple, blah, 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 and they're and they're gone. They're healed over now. In ninety days, they disappear from your record. Now take note. I had none of these on my original channel that had six thousand subs and three million views in three months. But this channel is growing, and we're gonna show you my most popular clip that I put up last night. That's kind of given me a flavor for what happened mm, a year ago, November. It was November 2020. No, 2019. When my channel started catching fire, I had some videos that were raging. I can't remember exactly what they were, but they were creatively borrowed, created, or clipped. And they took off. And next thing you know, I was getting an income. I'll show you a little bit about how that's going now. What do we do? We go to our, is this a playlist? Yeah. This uh, last video that I put up is a video, as you can see here. Let me recrop that for you just a bit. Chicago Teachers Union Super Cringe Interpretive Dance video. This is my quote. Stay safe. No school. 
Now, it's two minutes long. I put this up, I don't know, less than 24 hours ago. Look at me getting ratioed. This is the type of video that you want to put up where everyone dislikes it. I have 5,000 views, roughly. Oh, I hit 150 subscribers. Cool. I picked up a few in the last day. 5,000 views, 361 dislikes, and 23 thumbs up. That has never happened on my platform before, but I expect it with a video that looks like this, that treats you like an intellectual inferior. I will survive. Feel free to cringe at your leisure. Okay, can we get someone that knows how to dance? Make it make sense. Are we just gonna put the most awkward, safety, frumpy, Is untalented people we can find? Keep the ones that look so emotional. I don't know. Teachers. These are teachers in Chicago, as I said already. Safe. They don't want to go back to school until everything's peachy. I don't know if that means safeguards. It's our life. I know that this woman in the middle, she's, wow, wow, what acrobatic talent, wow. Wow, what's well, supposed to be a metaphor for struggle? In this moment. Be in this moment. Be safe. Oh, maybe I am making you watch the whole video. I'm sorry. This is not fair. Look at that poor child. The poor child's not safe. Put a mask on that child. Vaccinate that child. Give that child H C Q. You can't say that in a video out here or else you get a strike. Medical information. My strike. For was the last video was for speaking about the therapeutic use of a drug that's been widely accepted. I don't know. I'm, got, I'm not going to say the word because I don't need another formal strike or else I will not be able to upload or broadcast. So cringe video number one. I don't know if you'll find the rest of them cringy, but let's see. Time for the flag salute. Uh, this is the Pledge of Allegiance at a local council much, in yeah. LA. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. Under visible, uh, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. Really For which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Oof. Oof. And we all say oof. I feel for the guy. I'm not ragging him all the way out. Uh, it happens. When the mic is on, when the light is on, the red light, the record light, the broadcast light, I know you get, you forget things, man. I'm not, <laughs> so why didn't I just let it go? Why did I clip it and put it up there to further embarrass himself or embarrass this guy? No, just because it's what I do. It's like, let's say you're a regional counselor and let's say you uh, were picking your nose while you were on camera. And let's say I happen to be watching said council meeting. Um, do you think if you go, second knuckle deep into your schnoz with your digit well I don't care what you think I'm <laughs> gonna clip that stuff <laughs> and put it like it anyone can see it the fact that I am clipping it and promoting it is not hateful I'm having fun so here's an idea why don't you not pick your nose while the camera is running Okay, how about that? 
How about you don't pick your nose at the regional council meeting, regardless whether the camera's on you or not? Forget going two knuckles deep into your schmeg. <laughs> I don't know where I came up with that. I am an American. This is how a Russian girl, I believe, made a how-to video on how you can avoid being arrested uh, for not wearing a mask in your home country by claiming that you're American. I like it. I hope you do too. Here it is. Oh. I'm American. I'm American. I'm American. I'm Let's start it over for you. I'm American. I'm American. I'm American. I'm American. Если вас просят паспорт, скажите, я забыл свой паспорт в отеле. I left my passport at the hotel. И обязательно смотрите, где у нас артикль the, the hotel. The hotel. I left my passport at the hotel. Если вас пытаются запихнуть в автозак. You are violating my human rights. Вы нарушаете мои человеческие права. Последний пункт, когда уже все плохо. I'm gonna call my lawyer. Вы берете телефон и говорите, я oh, сейчас Oh, look at the nice cards I got come I'm up promoting my other lawyer. stuff. Gonna, I'm gonna oh, it comes up way too... I should take the cards off. Ребята, it ru it's ruining the end of the video there. Now, you, there's nothing that you can do to ruin this video. But I didn't put any tags up. Or end screens, is that what they call them? This is a short clip. Uh, one that I hope you'll enjoy. Of, uh, well, that's Joe Biden right there and back up Bongo. Or what's that? Uh, Jam Jambe? Is that what they call it? Whatever. A drum. Looks like one of those newfangled uh, synthetic drums. Anyways, a bongo of sorts. <laughs> oh, I'm really, I'm really drifting. Uh, <laughs> it's going to be a quick hit. I'm getting out of here. Trust me. This won't be long for you. The pain is short this week. Okay, here we go. Those of you that are listening without the video, Trump's <laughs> Trump. Trump is doing his little uh, fist pumping, elbows bent, kind of shaking it dance, the Trump dance, you know, bumping the fist, pointing, telling people he loves them. This is Michelle Obama, and that is a cackle of un. Insignificant proportions? No, that is that cackle's nasty. What? Okay, so this is specifically for men. It's an older clip. Older clip. Excuse me. Check out Newsmax TV. Do yourself a favor. You can expect some of this. Expected to visit the market. Link to the first cases. But the news is the news is pretty good, and she actually runs a good show. This is an old clip of Michelle Obama telling men to be better. All right. I think men are pretty great. I'm a man. I'm not saying I'm great, but I think men are pretty great. I like their role in society. I like the tradition of being a man. I like the protector. I like the guy that does man things with men. Also does man things for woman. This is where it all began. Barack Obama, race baiter, master in chief. <laughs> I don't know. I was hopeful for Bar Barack Obama and he let me down. I was hopeful for Justin Trudeau too. And he let me down. But this is a message for men to be better because you're not good enough. You're horrible, in fact. Be better. <laughs> now, I'm a guy that does not have a very good appreciation for a fake laugh. But if that is not forced laughter, I don't know what is. Um, f 
fake laugh. That's what that is. One more time. Is she done yet? <laughs> no, she stretches it out pretty good there. Let's see. Two seconds. <laughs> one, two, three, four, Be better. Five. That's a that's a big laugh. That's a big five second laugh. Um, be better, men. I have no problem with being better, men. Because we could all be better men. But asserting that all men need to be better is just so sexist and so tired and so old. And I know it's an old clip, but I just put it up. This is in the True Tube uh, channel of YouTube in the playlist called Clips. All right. This one's a minute 26. I might not play the whole thing for you, but I think you'll get the idea of where whoever created this is going. Uh President Ab Biden, it's only 25 seconds. This goes on for another minute. Dude, can well, we? Uh, 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 and is this Justin uh, Trudeau's uh, um, sister? Uh, um, daughter? Uh, no, um, couldn't be daughter. Um, um, uh, uh, no, couldn't be mother. Um, sister. Um, Let's go with sister. Uh, 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 now, uh, okay. I'm not sure I did not create this. I completely uh, uh, ripped it off. Uh, uh, this is not my creative work. Um, well, Oh, see how they flash too? Uh, I know what it's like because I put uh, one of these together before with Kathy Newman. Oh man, it's probably not up on any of my channels anymore. I'll have to try and find that. Kathy Newman says, so what you're saying to Jordan Peterson 44 times in a half hour interview. I'm going to have to look and see if I can find that and repost it. So I know what you when you put it together, sometimes you get a flash of another screen, like a reporter's face with a mask on, which is what you just saw. So there's another quick flash. It's very. There's another one. To get them all, sometimes you you can't. You have to work with the camera shot that you have. So I think this is real. I think this is legit. All in one press conference. How do you like that close up? What up, Ginger? Sarah Silverman. Remember when Sarah Silverman was funny? What, like, Sarah Silverman is a woman that you would not want to do cocaine with. Sarah Silverman, like, uh, let's see, who? Um, Michael Irvin, okay? Michael Irvin has a, a nose like a double garage. It's, his nostrils are huge. So you don't want him mucking up the party by by sniffing all the blow. Um, similarly, I think that maybe Sarah Silverman should get off the blow before she does or the Adderall or whatever it is that makes her move her mouth like I'm this. Forget the message. Domestic terrorists oh, no. are being treated like domestic terrorists. That makes me hopeful. You know, these are all sorts of people. Forget the uh, vocal fry. That have one thing in common, aside from blatant racism, which, you know, can you say aside from blatant racism? <laughs> aside from racism, and by the way, not all of them are racist, which is irrelevant because most of them are, and the rest go along with it. So, Sarah, oh, man. What a mouth. Um, what a nose. What a face. It doesn't turn me off. <laughs> I'm not repulsed by Sarah Silverman. I was actually a fan. She used to be funny. It's like, what, Chelsea Handler used to be funny. But now they're ideologically possessed, saying that all Trump voters are racists. And if you have racist friends, then you're racist. 
if you uh, are seen in a crowd where there is a racist in amongst them, then you are in a crowd of racists. What's the difference? Obvious pain so on this woman's along? face. Who are these extra people, the people that go along with it? In my opinion, you know, you got to remember that hate groups, MAGA, QAnon heads, these people form friendships. MAGA is a hate group? MAGA is a philosophy. Make America great again. <laughs> Created by the last president of the United States of America. Not all MAGA wearing Trump supporters are white supremacists, Sarah. And a feeling of belonging and camaraderie that I think they've never experienced before. It's a sacred feeling and it becomes far more important, far more precious, far more sacred than facts. Are you sure you're not talking about yourself, Sarah? I wonder. You know, the Democrats and the and the people that argue for points on the left, I find often project. They project their insecurities. They project their failures onto others. They project the way that they are being onto the people that disagree with them, all the while being flat out in bright daylight, a complete hypocrite. That's what I think of when I hear this woman speak. Because it feels like love. Even if they get that pang in their gut, that uh, this maybe is a no good. Now, is this misappropriation of culture? Is this mocking of the Italian language? Or are you mocking your own, what What are you, Jew? Your Jewish mother? Or f your... Either way, I mean, I do it too. <laughs> Everyone loves the, I don't know, what, the Indian or the Pakistani accent when you're messing with your boys if you can do it well. Everyone loves the Scottish and Irish accents for that mat matter if you can do them. I do them. Not all well. Sometimes they're funny. And I'm not super sensitive to somebody, but why the Italians? Why is it always okay to make a fun of Mario or Luigi, huh? Why you gotta? You the best. Who the best? You the best. I got a whole language built around old Italian guy, okay? I have a good friend of mine that's Italian. It's freaking hilarious when he does it. I can't do it like him. But you're the best. You're the best is what the two old guys say walking down the driveway when one guy's saying goodbye to the other. Hey, 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 hey. You're the best. That, in fact, doesn't get said a whole lot, but one Italian guy said it, and it made me laugh forever. So you're stuck with it. Maybe what they're involved in is based on a big lie, on lies. Let's talk about lies. You know, People like you have been saying for four years, ever since Trump was elected, when they sucked, when they spied on him, that he was a Russian spy, that he was working with Putin, that blah blah, and it's all been debunked in broad daylight. And you want to talk to us about truth? For four years, you and the media types, MSNBC, all the major networks other than Fox and Newsmax. Newsmax is blowing up, by the way. Here's a clip of what they're, they're broadcasting right now. Oh, Biden's, uh, he's going to be live at 2.30. Oh, shoot. I should be, we should be set up to carry that live. I should probably do that. And there goes my train of thought. What was I talking about? How can I go back? I can't go back. I forgot. I brain farted. Am I done with this woman? They don't want to lose that sense of belonging to something. Oh, the projection and the lies. So for four years, people like you and the news media that are leftists like you claimed Russia, Russia, Russia. Then there was the Ukraine. Then there was the impeachment. All based on 
lies. The dossier, fabricated, all political, spying on Trump's campaign before he was elected, during the transition, and after he was elected, the FBI, Sting, Roger Stone, like, who's the other? Michael Flynn. They set these guys up. They set them up. And the media lied about it for years, Sarah. And you want to talk to us about truth? <laughs> Again, I have no script here. I'm just watching this Not with you. Not to mention the very uh, realistic fear of repercussions. You know, this is... Repercussions. Repercussions like putting conservatives on a list. Anyone that questioned the election results is now a domestic terrorist. Repercussions of metal detectors on the floor of Congress. Do you know you're allowed to pack a piece on Congress? In Congress. And there's a woman that is carrying a piece in with her. And now, suddenly, the AOCs of the world think that they're going to get murdered in the House by white supremacists. I almost said black supremacists. There's more black supremacists out there right now, vocal ones, than the whites. You show me how white supremacists have gone anywhere and said anything in the last five years, done anything. Like, seriously, there's like 40 of them. <laughs> I exaggerate, but... <laughs> There's a great deal more black supremacy going on than white supremacy. And you know who's committing the terror acts? Black Lives Matter, a black supremacist group, and Antifa. Shit disturbers of the 10th degree. Disseminated down from a leader who is, whose power comes from people knowing that he uh, is vindictive. You know, Their daddy taught them that. But I think that um, a feeling of belonging overrides everything to them. It's okay, human. this is stale. She really, wow, what a face. <laughs> There's so much pain. And, I, you know, like I said, I have no script. I didn't pause this on a specific spot. But look at how appropriate that face is. So much pain. You won the White House. You won the Senate. Shut up. <laughs> And stop trying to convince the rest of us that we're all racist, intolerant bigots. Thank you very little. Joy Reid. Joy Reid is the one of my favorites. The right hates the most about Democrats is that Democrats have the culture. Democrats have the culture. They have the Hollywood culture. They have the glamorous culture. And the right hates that. They feel that the culture is too woke, it's too multicultural, it's not John Wayne anymore. There's all of this multiculturalism and wokeness and liberalism, and they hate it, but they also envy it. Do you feel the drama? Unmistakable race baiting, division. This is Joy Reid of MSNBC and the her thing, two the right co hosts. Blinking blocks of wood. Richard Maddow on the left and who knows, white guy on the right. You're not convincing the whole of America that half of it is racist and half of it hates the other because they've got all the culture. You know what conservatives have? They have their laws. They have law and order. They have borders. They have their religion. They have guns. Free speech. Culture? What do you got? Hollywood culture? Of what? Pedos? Is anyone as disturbed as I am by this type of nonsense? I don't think so. How can I heal from the rage that I feel when I see people talk and spew hatred and lies like this. You might think what I do is spewing hatred and lies. I don't know. I might be. I'm the first to cop to the fact that I'm trying to deal with my inner hate and how it manifests in real life. But these people are oblivious to it. I hates the most about Democrats is that Democrats have the culture. Now, I hear that you're saying it over and over and over as we're... You know, if you repeat a lie often enough, people will start to believe it. I can't get over this. 
I can't get over this. Democrats I mean, have I, the culture. They have the Hollywood culture. I'm over it. They I mean, have I'm, the not, I'm not injured culture. by it. And the right hates that. Hates they feel that. that the culture oh. is too woke. It's too multicultural. Hates Here it's comes the John acting. Wayne anymore. There's all of this multiculturalism and wokeness and liberalism, and oh, they hate it. They hate it. All right, Joy Reid. Just AOC. A violent coup attempt. Um, but we also saw a dereliction of duty and a betrayal of our country and a betrayal of the oath that we swear. And that is why I have demanded the resignations of Senators Ted Cruz, Senators Josh Hawley, um, majority leader, Republican majority, or rather Republican minority leader in the House, uh, McCarthy, Kevin McCarthy. I demand your resignation, AOC. See, uh, well, what's going on with you? Got a lazy eye going there? Uh, what is it with the way I'm pausing this stuff today? I demand your resignation. Now, do you see how that didn't work? It's about as effective as what you just did. I demand your resignation, AOC. Resign now. I demand it. See how that didn't work? Yeah, just like you. Along with, with many others. Everyone because should resign. This is not just about political opinion yeah, or partisanship. It is. Yeah, it is. This was about the abandonment of our sworn oath for... This is really labored. She's really struggling to get this out. You know what this is about? The abandonment of all common sense all of it everything that we know is being intelligent is gone out the window with this woman what for personal ambition do you can you taste the drama for usually she has loyalty, her notes to the left on the a base right down there where she was just looking I hope you'll join me many now this is christy christina freeland wow Fuck. I'm sorry to do this to you. Um, hopefully I'll have some men to rip apart, but not a good luck begging for money for the Liberal Party. Now, I, wanted, I want you to just notice the condescension in this woman's voice. I hope you'll join the many other Canadians who have already chipped in to help reach And she's you. asking for your money. Support, Keep in mind. Our Liberal government it's a nice vocal fry, though. Very popular with the ladies these days. You know, when you talk like this, you like you put your little girl voice on. Yeah, that's a vocal fry. There's light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah. Do you know how to do the vocal fry? Right now. Right now. Right now, you need to get out your vocal fry. Yeah, baby. You like that the vocal fry, huh? Right. You don't like that? I guess Aaron Rodgers steps up to the plate and says what uh, everyone is thinking. He says the quiet part out loud. Let's cancel Aaron Rodgers. Thank you. Don't eat out at a restaurant, you know, unless you're wearing a mask and, and separate. Oh, here's a picture of... Uh, the governor of California violating those rules. Oh, public schools are closed, but I can send my kids to a private school in person school. And it's like, I mean, for us to, to count on the government to help us out is, is becoming a joke at this point. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Aaron Rodgers, for saying the quiet part out loud. Same for what we all are sitting. Well, not all of us, many of us are just following this man. This very touchy, feely, inappropriately sniffing man. I've never called Joe Biden a P. E. Dio. <laughs> never. Uh, Amy Coney Barrett. Hi. She's happily married. This is a bowling ball we need with a mouth. Million. His name is... Is Charles Barkley. Now, 
I don't see bowling ball in a racist term, even though, you know, back in the day, most bowling balls were black. You could, I guess, put it. Oh, shoot. Am I missing this? Darn it. Oh, well. I'll pick it up later. I have to get going anyway. Charles Barkley feels that the privileged, the rich white athletes, because they make more money and pay more taxes, should get the vaccine first. Shots. I've given a thousand to some NBA players. What about what about NFL? NFL. I'm just getting ready to say NFL players, hockey players. I, listen, as much taxes as these players pay. Let me repeat that: as much taxes as these players pay, they deserve some preferential treatment. Uh, uh, um. What? Come on, Chuck. Uh, Chuck, it's not Chuck. Chuck. Chuck, 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 Chuck. Please stop. Please stop. Please stop, Chuck. For for life and death? Yes. The the amount of money you make. Uh, No, no, I said taxes. I didn't say the amount of money you make. Well, that's that's on on taxes. I'm saying the amount. I didn't say the amount of money you made. I said the taxes that you pay. How does a... (laughs) He sounds like a good old boy. Down south, is that... That's how whiteys talk down south, I thought. I guess maybe I'll talk the same in, in some parts. You bowling ball with teeth. That's it. Bully ball with teeth. I forgot. The I, amount of taxes these guys pay. Oh, no. It, they, they, we they, can't go there. No. I, I don't think you could go there. I'm. Thank you, whoever that is. I don't even think that's Stephen A. Smith, but thank you for, you know what? We, we just we can't the go there. The now, there's an attack on masculinity. I've talked about it for years. There's also an attack on religion. There's an attack on the, the traditional family home, you know? Man, woman, child. Here's an attack on, oh, jeez. It's a prayer in Congress where they change a man to a man and a woman. God, Brahma, you fucking and kidding God me. Known by many names, by many different faiths. A man and a woman. Now, that is not a joke. That is so not a joke. That actually happened recently on the floor of Congress. What? A man and a woman is not a final closing for a prayer. Amen. Look up the word. It has a meaning. It does not mean a man. This is Robin Black, one of my favorite guys of all time. Um, Do not be misled by his sweetness he's a killer and in this case he was hanging out at yyz in the quiet lounge where you're not supposed to be using your cell phone or talking he went on youtube and i put how do you edit in the most simple one i could find now i'm upgrading it and get better but and a 12 year old girl popped up and she said okay if you click on this button you'll Ah. notice that we'll go here and now if you press this look now you cut and it was like that's how i learned and then Oh, yes. So I'm in a, I'm in a little part of the airport. No, it's no problem. I'm in a little part of the airport where it actually just says, please don't talk. And I, and I just noticed that. So, so I hope, um, so perhaps I've been rude to the people around me. I didn't see that. I mean, it's so, so obvious when I look at it now, it's sitting right there. But so I should, um, I should actually, let me walk this way and see how that goes. Okay. Um, I'm literally looking. I have no, it's, look how. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a great interview. I mean, look, I mean, you can't make that stuff up. Now, I, I'm not sure if uh, Robin is embarrassed by this, but uh, Robin Black is a guy, look at how handsome this man is. What a, just a beautiful man and a sweet man too. He will give you the time and the love regardless, a man, woman, whatever. Uh, just a very sweet human being and great hair. Um, <laughs> he retweets everything. He comments every time somebody does something on Twitter. He used to respond to everyone. I know he's toned that back a little bit because it's quite exhausting, but he is a good man out there. Now, when I clip this and put it back out there, I did not get any love from Mr. Robin Black. <laughs> 
So one day when I talk to him again, because I feel like we'll do another interview, we're actually working, well, we were supposed to do one over the holidays, but whatever, he's busy. Um, when I, uh, I'm going to ask him, dude, are you embarrassed by that? Because I thought, well, like his reaction to this, which you can find on the clips over here, if you like, was just the sweetest thing I've ever seen. Next up, Justin Trudope. But first, I think I found a mask that I can wear. I am Gavin McInnes. Can you tell? Can you see the beard through the mask? Okay, I'm not really Gavin McInnes. I was on my, uh, I guess you call it a prayer group. My church is doing 21 days of prayer. And I've been... Uh, Listening in, I even participated yesterday at some level. So I'm up at 5.30, and I'm on a Zoom call at 6 till 7. And um, after my Zoom call, I found myself, well, first of all, I created another Zoom call and put it out on the chat, and then I said anyone want to do an after party or a tailgate after the post game or after the game post game um, here's the click here's the link click it I put that in the chat window of my prayer group I am live by the way even though I'm not moving you can't see my mouth moving much I've got a couple things I want to talk to you about before we get to Trudeau and what else is up in the political world it's about masks. Hmm. Can you see how I'm feeling today? No, you can't. Well, I purchased a mask. I'm, again, playing dress up in my downtime. I'm up early. The house is quiet. And I got up to no good. Today, a little less harmful than most days when I get up to no good but it's early the day is young there's time for me I made a purchase on Facebook and it was a mask and I think I found a mask that I can wear now that doesn't we that doesn't wean that doesn't mean you're gonna see me in a mask other than this ever Unless, well, unless I'm at work or I'm volunteering and uh, I want to play by the rules. I don't want to play by those rules in a mask. And this is actually a, uh, I can't spoil the effect, can I? But I don't like, I don't like this. I don't like the feeling of having something over my nose and mouth. It's disgusting. It makes me afeard. But, and I'm not afraid of dying of COVID, so, and I don't believe mask work anyway. But I did make a purchase. And in addition to this fine hoodie that I located for cheap, new, and cheap, it, uh, I, you know, I just got it because it's like an active hoodie. And I didn't really know what it was, but it's got like, you know, thumb holes in it for you. And never had anything with thumb holes before. Um, interesting, my headphones disappear. Yeah, I do have them on. Weird, that's good. I like that. I forgot to take them off. I made a purchase. A mask I think I can wear. Anyways, I bought this hoodie the other day. And lo and behold, I went to try it on after I washed it. Because you always wash new clothes before you wear them. And look what I found. Inside is a neck gaiter that pulls up like, wow, it's perfect. Best $12 I've invested in a while. Thank you, Giant Tiger. Or <laughs> whatever. Is that Giant Tiger? I think that's it. 
Uh, so that was a nice surprise because this is exactly the type of product I uh, purchased on the net. And uh, I guess I can take these off now. How do you like my set? This is it. If you need me in a mask, this is how you're going to get me. What do you think? I can show my teeth. Oh, hey now. <laughs> What do you think? Um, I think we should start to take. Um, we should start heeding the advice of um, Doctor Tam. Doctor Doctor Tam has some very good advice. You should wear masks when you have sex. <laughs> so yeah, I bought a mask. It seems to be working. I don't feel moisture on my face. I don't feel like I'm bathing in my excrement. Um, how's it look? Imagine waking up to this. You too could be like me. You too could wake up to a guy like me. <laughs> All right. So where were we? Justin Trudeau. Is that what we're doing next? Welcome to the world where Jimmy plays dress up, wears a mask, and invites people to do the same in bed. It's a slow day. And plays, uh, so in addition to playing dress up, I'm also playing Gavin McInnes. <laughs> Let's see here, we got this thing straight. My camera I think is exactly backwards. So that's it, Mr. Dress Up from uh, Jimmy's Little Corner of the World. Um, now, back to our originally, originally, it's early. It's too early to be drunk. I haven't, I haven't drank in a long time, actually. I'm not drinking these days. Uh, it's not too early to do Adderall, though. <laughs> Might be too late to do Adderall. It's almost 8 a.m. Anyways, back to the Jim Fannin show. What are we going to do next? Justin Trudeau? We're just going to massacre some clips today. This is Justin Trudeau. He is the Prime Minister of one of the greatest countries in the world, Canada. Love Canada. Not such a big fan of it these days, but I love Canada normally. Justin Trudeau is a man that I would not trust to have time alone with my children because I'm afraid of what he might tell them or try and get them to believe. Having said that, Justin Trudeau, this is an older clip, one of my favorites and again most well all of these clips that we play today are on the true tube channel on youtube under the playlist heading clips it's a short clip i'm going to play this for you now and justin trudeau would like to take a moment to speak to your kids alone moms by asking all the moms to step out of the room for a minute so I can talk to your kids. I'll give you a second. 
Uh, serious. <laughs> Sorry about that. Oh my gosh. Dr. Tam. Um, Dr. Tam, here, I have a question for you. Why aren't you telling us anything about the state of the infections in Canada? Doug Ford, same question. This is what I want you to hear. These are daily new cases in Canada as we are halfway through our second lockdown in Ontario. New daily cases. I have the seven day moving average checked. That's the blue line. You'll see the first wave here. We peaked around 1700 new daily cases, which means basically positive tests. Okay, that does not mean cases. Cases should be saved for people with symptoms. Because if you're asymptomatic, you're probably not spreading it. That's the word on the street lately. Again, we're learning as we go. Second wave. We peaked at an average around 9,000, but you can see in the fat part, we're at about... Let's, see, let's turn this off. Here, here's the fat part of the height here. Let's say 7,500. That's the fat part. That's like, you know, the crest. But, you know, we were at, let's say, what's this right here? 7,200. Right across here, we're over 7,000. And then we have some peaks. But we do see a decline, as will be natural, as we come out of flu season, which is in here, and here, and here. And it pretty much naturally starts coming down every year around this time, right? I don't know. Check it out. Deaths. We don't want you to know that we're actually doing okay in the death department, right? Like, here's wave one, Canadian deaths per day, okay? And even with three or four or five times the positive tests or cases that we had in phase one, we're still doing all right on the deaths. Even if you take it, okay, we had some peaks here, right? We had a peak of 11,000. That's like, you got to throw those ones out. The spikes are no good. The low ones and the high ones. Like down here, look, we had 1,000, right? Up here, we had 10,000. So there's obviously a, a lag in reporting or what have you. So you can't take it all. You got to throw some of it out. But if we go back here to about 2,000 cases, let's see, let's put the average on again. Wow, look at these. We're well below... 2000 we had some peaks in there but again we, we peaked right around here at 1700 i've used these stats many times this was wave one whatever now we're at we peaked at almost five times right let's call it four it's probably closer to five let's see Let's do a quick calculation. Calculation. 1700. Uh, what's that give me? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what I'm trying to figure out here. And here's the point. Oh, yeah, we're, uh, let's see. Yeah, 1,700. We're at five times the cases. From 1,700 to 80, if we would call it 8,500, which was kind of crazy. We should be calling it more like in here, 7,600, but nah, let's just go with this 
to peaks, right? The peak was here around 1750. The peak was here around 8,000. And that's five times the positive tests, not medical cases. So we're at five times the positive infections or the positive tests, let's say. That's not infections because you have the asymptomatic out there. And guess what? We're at five times the daily infections, positive tests, and we still haven't hit the peak of where we were in wave one when we're unprepared for it. We're doing okay. We're coming out of it. And meanwhile, Doug Ford is continuing to lock down the whole province. Come on, man. Oh, did I say that? This is what mainstream media is not telling you. <laughs> wow. I have to start time stamping and making notes on this as I go and put it in the show notes. I'll try to get better at that. What's next here? Okay, what's next is another, you know, an older clip, but I saw this as a commercial on a show that I was watching. It's only 20 seconds, so now that I've scared you with her face, poor thing, I um, might as well play the 20-second clip. All right, here it is. Let me see. Let's give you some lips. The producer actually knows what he's doing. And let's drop this mic. A serious. We must continue to practice all public health measures. Follow local guidelines for gatherings. Maintain physical distancing. Wash your hands, wear a mask, and download the COVID Alert app. If you have symptoms, even mild ones, stay home. Protect yourself and others. Well, sorry, the producer is letting these clips run into each other. This is a scene in Quebec where um, Mr. and Mrs. Bylaw officer came to a gathering a private gathering in a home of six people, I thought, <laughs> and dragged a couple peeps off to jail? Or where? What the? Seriously? What's going on in this world, dudes? I don't need to play you the audio of it because it's just a yelling and screaming bunch of it. A little bit of... And you've probably seen this before. Again, this is not a new clip. It's just one of my clips. Like, see, like this is... <laughs> okay, how do they know who to arrest? Do they, they arrest the homeowner? They come in and say, you've got more than four people in your house? You got to go or you're not from the same resident? Like... I'm fear, fearful for our future, to be honest with you, if this is what it looks like. What? Am I an alarmist? Am I dramatic like a prime minister coming in and saying, Hey, moms, I'd like to talk to your children. I'll give you a second to leave the room. I'll wait. Hi, kids. It's your prime minister, Justin Trudeau. I know times are a little tough, but you're going to have to hug a little harder, hold on a little tighter, and be there for your parents, just like the federal government is there for you. Okay, kids? All right. Story time's over. Now, back to the apprehension of innocent people just living their lives. Thank you very much, Quebec. We have a new take on... Breitbart's War. This is a popular clip on my old channel. Breitbart. Man, I wish I had been around when he was around. I, mean, I wish I was listening to him back in those days when he was around. He kind of pioneered a whole industry in conservative news, I think. What was he caught up in? The Bill Clinton something. I don't know. Anyways, Andrew Breitbart, one of my favorites rest in peace and didn't know much of his work I haven't even seen much of it but I just liked who he was a firecracker and this is a new take on war uh, the old take was set to the music of um, 
shoot, run by AWOL Nation. That's it. And this one is not. It's a new take on an old clip. This is Andrew Breitbart War. You're going to call us racist. You're going to call us potential Timothy McVeigh's. Fuck you. Are you scared yet? (laughs) I love that clip. I hope that's not copyrighted music because it'll get me. No, I think this is po- no. This is already posted on my YouTube channel, so it uh, it got ba- it get it got past the censors, kid, kids, kid. I, I should say kid because I'm only talking to one. Uh, <laughs> what do we got next here? Okay, here's one for you. If you know me, you know that I've long been a caller to radio shows. I uh, was such a loyal and regular caller that I actually worked my way onto said program as a host, said station. The caller turns host of the station that he was calling. And then I started doing the Jim Fannin show. Uh, was one to two on Sunday on 610 CKTB. I followed Andy Petrowski, who did The Region with Peter Cormus. Rest in peace, Peter. One of a kind, we miss you. When Peter died, I started making noises about somebody needs to be the left wing for Andy Petrowski on that show. I managed to get myself an interview at the station. The program director spoke for me to the general manager in that meeting. Basically, I got my own show right then and there. <laughs> it was awesome. Forget going on with Andy. I'm going to follow Andy on my own show. Perfect. So we did that for a while. Then Andy um, got himself in hot water, which is Andy's style back in the day. He was a regional counselor. Clearly spoken and outspoken. Popular and hated at the same time by different people more than likely anyways i took over his spot man i'm really rambling this morning man so then i got 12 to 2 on sundays the jim fannin show was 12 to 2 for about a year on sundays and then the jim fannin show subbed in for uh, larry fedoric tom mcconnell kevin jack at the time Who else was I filling in for? I never filled in for Tim. I didn't think that anyone would appreciate Jimmy Fannin first thing in the morning, so I didn't do the morning show. And I think waking up at 3 in the morning is, you know, I mean, it's not not possible, but anyway. I uh, ran that show for about a year and a half, 18 months. We brought a lot of local musicians in to play the music in and out of commercial. We call it bumper music. Intro, outro, whatever. We did them live. It was awesome. Paige Cop was one of my first guests. A rising star in the Niagara music scene. In the music scene, period. Go check out her band... Foolproof on YouTube. Some got some some great stuff. Anyway, I say all that, and then I had the CHSC show back in the day that started as the real estate show and then morphed into the Jim Fannin show where I did politics. I talked to I interviewed Jack Layton, Stephen Harper, uh, Tony Clement, Jim Bradley, uh, Frank D. Young. At the time, he was the leader of the Green Party of Ontario. It's some good guests. Jim Bradley actually came into the studio at CHSC with me. Spent an hour with him. It was awesome. 
That was back in whatever day it was. I don't know. I have my first show on cassette, and I have the ability to play it back to you. I just might do that one day, put it up on YouTube, my very first radio show where I was uh, alone. I think I have the first show when I did it with Nanny Mac, too. Nanny Mac, Nancy McIntosh is a local legend. She broke me in, man. I'm a kind woman. Still love Nanny Mac. Anyway, I say that all to say that now I've moved on. I can't listen to 610 CKTP. It's unlistenable. First of all, Tommy moved to the afternoon. I very rarely listen to AM radio in the afternoon. I don't listen to AM radio at all now because because I used to be listen to it in the morning and I can't listen to the morning show now, especially Tim Dennis. He's so left-leaning liberal. It's unbelievable. And I'm tired of the indoctrination. I'm tired of the mainstream media spin. And Tim is all that. Then you got uh, Moose or Monster Matt, and well, he's all of that. A Moose, a Monster, and a Matt. And he uh, is a, one of the worst broadcasters I've ever seen. Um, well, his wife is Stephanie Saverin, who was the news director at 610 CKTB. So I think there's a connection there. I'm pretty sure that's true. I've been told that's true. Stephanie Saverin. Stephanie Saverin? Saverin? Is it? Yeah, she went over to the NRP. She's now the Niagara Regional Police's spokesperson or spokesperson for the NRP. Yeah, not the NRPS. So it's unlistenable. I can't do it. But I do call Gavin's show, and maybe <laughs> if I call him enough and I do some good content out here. Oh, well, you saw earlier my tribute to Gavin. I put this set up there. Trying to sell those SA masks. Oh, so here is an example of a question I ask Gavin that's not actually a comedy bit. Normally when I call Gavin McInnes, he's a comedian. He runs a comedy show, for lack of a better description. It's political talk, but it's hilarious. It's funny. And it's not scripted. It's not Crowder. It's There's no rehearsal. They just wing it. I love it. So here's an example of me getting on Get Off My Lawn Live with Gavin McInnes as a caller. Next shitty call, I'm reading from a sponsor. Hey, Jim. To punish you. My brother, can you hear me all right? Yes. Yep. It's all good, man. Uh, I just also had a fantasy about Ryan dying, and I was really sad for a Aww. minute. Nice job on the app. Sorted a bunch of bugs for me. And I uh, love the laughs and the comedy that are sorely needed these days. Brother, I wonder, outside of Rogan and Ezra, who's dropped you because there's, quote, you know, you've got a hive of bees around you, or bees flying around you, and who stood beside you? I hope that uh, you sue the SPLC into bankruptcy. And thanks for taking my call. I'll listen online. I like you more than a friend. Peace out, yo! Perfect. That was a good one, except... Jim Rule. Except... He had a fantasy about you dying, and he felt sad. Yeah, he didn't like it. He, I think he means he had a dream. No, no, it was a, probably like a nightmare, maybe. Or like a, yeah, no, but he, no one fantasizes. You don't feel bad about your fantasies. Oh, I don't I feel bad about Eva Mendez and Lucy Liu wrestling over who gets to blow me first. He imagined it. Okay, that's not a fantasy, dude. Um, <laughs> I think it's easier to list who didn't abandon me. Mm. That would be Laura Loomer, Milo Yiannopoulos, Alex Jones, then like Jack Posobiec, Cassandra Fairbanks, uh, all those sort of weirdo misfit toys on the on the um, on the right. It, what about liberals who didn't screw me over? I don't want to say their names because they didn't go public about it, and I don't want to screw ruin their careers. <laughs> but very few out of this sort of L.A. funny scene, I can think of one. Mm. And he's getting in shit because he goes to parties and he doesn't disparage Trump enough. He doesn't wear a Trump shirt, but they're all bitching about Trump and then look over at him and he's like, meh. That's, that's wearing a Klansman's, Klansman uniform in L.A. Gotcha. Uh, so, yeah, and Dave Rubin, by the way, he had abandoned me uh, back like maybe two years ago. He was already like, yeah, I'd love to get you on the show, but... Uh, yeah. James O'Keefe didn't abandon you. James O'Keefe, that's another good one. Mm -hmm. But but he doesn't, the, he's not someone who hosts people. You're right. He did appear on my show, though, at the drop of a hat. So, yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. James O'Keefe's a good example. Um, oh, Iowa. Anthony Cumia. Oh, yeah. So that's that. Um, one of my early calls to the show, actually, you can see he's, not, he's now got an Apple Magic Mouse, so you don't need a pad for it. And uh, the set's pretty much the same. So once in a while, I come in with a contribution as a caller. He set his rules pretty tight on the show now, so you can only talk about one thing. You can't ramble and make a bunch of comments and then ask him a couple of questions. Uh, but sometimes he'll keep you on and keep the conversation rolling. So I've been really really appreciating Gavin's humor through these strange times. We share the same political views. Now, I say now because I've moved. He's always been this way. Uh, I've come from far left over to the middle, and now that is classified as Klansman, actually. White supremacist, far alt-right. The middle is now alt-right. The left has gone f so far left, and the far left thinks that they speak for us in the middle who compose 95% of the electorate, both liberal and conservative, we're in the moderate middle, you losers. Shut up. We're not listening to you anymore. Well, we have no choice but to listen to mainstream media, which is shoving it down our throats. And they are far-left activists as well. Okay. What's next here in the clip department? Okay, so this is also in the clip section of the TrueTube channel on YouTube. It's a short little clip. I was going to play you my violent sex clip. I don't have the video, but I do have the audio of it. Um, I think it's right here in the clip section. I'm not going to force that down your throat. <laughs> but I'm going to play this. I thought this, this one made me laugh out loud. This is uh, more Gavin and Ryan Katsu Rivera, his producer, sidekick, and everything he said he it's his show you know it's the producer's show anyways here's gavin on an episode recently where he wonders aloud all episode if he's in fact stupid i think he came to the conclusion that yes he is <laughs> i'm asking someone with the iq of a fish to help me determine if i'm smart bloop, bloop. by the way Censored.tv is where you want to go for the hilarity of Gavin McInnes. Censored.tv is $10 a month, and it's the best $10 I've ever spent. Go check it out. Censored.tv. If you use, there is a code you can use. I don't get anything from it, but uh, atheism is unstoppable. I can't remember what his code is. If you go look at he wasn't jogging at he wasn't jogging on twitter it's in his bio you can use the discount code atheism is unstoppable has because he's a contributor to the show and contracted to get a little piece of some of the revenue that he sends over there so i'm glad to help him out a little bit his name is devin tracy and if you look at Dem devin tracy's channel on youtube the music videos the mashups that he's doing talented guy and funny you want to check that out so go there now. Slam down your 10 bucks. If you don't get your money's worth in the first month, I will personally refund you the 10 bucks. Got it? There's a guarantee you can't do without. I'm a pimp, and I'm gay for Gavin, and that's all there is to it. Far be it from me to be a judge of what is relevant these days. This is Jane Fonda. I'm not sure how relevant she is today or how many people she may influence with her opinion. This one, I happen to agree with her on. When she made it, I was outraged. But looking back, I think she was right. And she's talking about coronavirus in this clip. And you know, let me just play it for you. And then uh, well, you can tell me what you think in the comments below, as if anyone's going to comment. You know, I just think um, COVID is God's gift to the left. <laughs> <laughs> you think COVID was God's gift to the left, meaning Democrats, meaning get rid of Trump, meaning take over the Senate, meaning <laughs> 
the new world order for our platform, the Great Reset, reimagining all systems because they're racist and broken. Here's one thing I will say about systems. When you start messing with systems to make them better, there's a better chance that your tweaks break them or at least work in reverse to what you're trying to accomplish. If you take a system that's running, let's say, at uh, 85%, all right, Efficient, like efficiency, or accuracy, or whatever the metric might be. Let's say you want to take it to 90, 95%. Do you know how difficult it is to make that system better without doing harm to the system? It's very difficult. In fact, there's a much greater chance that your little tweaks to the system that should yield positive results, especially if they're not taken incrementally, could have a harmful effect on your system. But these leftists feel that all systems are broken, all systems need to be burned to the ground and reimagined, all of them. Man, I'm really tired of that narrative. It's so old. Why so old? Okay, what's next here in the clip section? Again, I apologize for doing this to you. This is Black Lives Matter twerking for Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Twerking on the Capitol. Okay, I kind of think this is in bad taste. I saved you the, first of all, let's go to the, that is the beginning. Let's take it frame by frame and just look at the imagery here. I did not put the music on here. It might have been copyrighted, which is fine. Let's just do a little scroll. Let's see if we, well, maybe we'll just play it. Okay, so first of all, is it just me because I'm a man and all I think about is sex? Or is this a very phallic, I don't know, symbol, right? And it, it okay, so it starts out with her bum twerking. You can see in the in the corner there. And then it moves to more twerking. And then to this. This sliding. See how it slides down? Then her ass shot again. Sliding down the pole. Ass shot. Pole shot. Ass shot. Okay, I'm just stopping and starting this. More pole. <laughs> I know they're at the Capitol, but do you see the nonverbal commit? Like, what is it? And then again, more pull, rising. <laughs> okay, it's the Capitol monument. I get it. I just think it's sick, sick, disrespectful, and sick. Who is this influencer? And how is this acceptable? Like, I mean, I'm, I'm all for free speech and expression. Yeah, I think you're just super cringe. I'm not saying it should be taken down. But it's not appropriate, dude. First of all, are you trying to be awkward and cringe? We could, <laughs> I guess twerking is supposed to look irresponsible and deviant. Rather, like, twerking is not hot right like that's not what we're looking for when we're twer twerking I don't think are we like what the fuck what is this why 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 super cringe woman I don't I don't get it influencer what are you influencing hopefully not too many people First of all, did you look in, did you check the mirror before you left the house? And why are you twerking in front of children? I don't find this sexy at all. But I don't also want to have to explain to my 10-year-old what that is. <laughs> Where are these people in the background? 
I didn't really notice there was children there before, but there's a good chance some of these are kids. Let's see. What? Why? Why, woman? Why, woman, would you ever do this to yourself? What, is, what statement is this making for black lives? Twerking on a monument in front of kids. There's a kid right there. He's probably about eight. Look at all the kids. There are some kids. Look at that kid. That kid, that kid right there. Okay, let me do this for you. <laughs> Shit, like, is it me? Like, oh, look at this poor child. Oh, okay, yeah, here we go. This is a child, I'm pretty sure. This child is four, five years old. Well, why do I have to explain to this child why you're shaking your ass in a public space in a government building? Like, I'm all for it, okay? Why? It's just distasteful. I don't care who it is or what your skin color is. What are you doing? It's expressing yourself. How about you express yourself somewhere else? Huh? I'm not saying you can't come. I'm just saying some of us don't have the best of judgment. Girlfriend. And you seem to be one of them. I don't want you near my kids shaking that thing. <sighs> look. Like uh, the f look on her face. Yeah, I'm bad. Look at how bad I am. Look at all these kids walking by me. Why? 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 All right. So, was that all I do when I come out here? Is bitch and complain? Apparently so. What's next on the clips? Holy shit. We're uh, coming up in an hour and a half total time. This show has been compiled over a couple different days. I'm pretty sure. And I used uh, OBS. I now have a pause feature. So I can pause this bad boy and just leave my apps open and running and then come back to it and do a little bit and press record. So I've never done a broadcast that wasn't 100% live to air. Uh, well, no, that's not true. I have done broadcasts that I recorded live to tape and then broadcast at a later date. But never have I done anything that's been edited or stopped, uh, what do they call it, jump, jump cuts. Like basically, I've hopefully it works, but I've never done an episode where I'm able to pause like this and then come back like this with a dis different screen and a different topic. So earlier we went over the coronavirus deaths in Canada. Here's the cases per day. Seven day average, mo uh, yeah, seven day moving average is the blue line. Okay, wave one for them was a little different than us, but they were back around, I don't know, 70-ish, not even. Okay, there was a long period of time where the average daily positive tests, again, not cases, this says cases, but it's not actually cases. These are positive tests. Cases should be symptoms. So the first day we were 70,000, and now we're three times that at least roughly three times the daily cases 70 to two to 250 just over three times right this is all united states and here's a, something that's weird look at the fat part of this curve down here like let's turn this off is this reporting stats and uh, anomalies? Because I see very few peaks here that are off the median. I see a lot of peaks that are off the median here. The median's way down here. The median's like in, you know, if you take out the peaks and the valleys and whatever, the median's actually much lower than some of these stats are reporting.
and much higher. But based on the fact that we have, here's their bump, daily deaths around 2,000, even lower, I would say right in there around 1,700. And then right over here, we're, we're basically right around the same if you take out a bunch of these peaks. Now, if you go with these peaks, okay, fine. We're at 2,000 here. We're at 4,000 here. But again, look at the daily infections. Hugely multiplied. So three times the total positive tests. Basically, the deaths, if you look down here, the deaths haven't really gone that much further higher. If you go by the actual stats, the actual moving average, let's call it 33. We could even say probably 3,000. See, there's so many dips in here, right? Eh? If you go right in here, this is pretty much... Well, actually, right in here is the fat part. Actually, if you go down here, this is probably more like the fat part. Like, there's no days that were under 1,500 infections all the way through here. That was like a base. See the fat part in here? Oh, you can't see my cursor. You can just see the totals at the top. Anyways, we've got way more infections. Not infections. Positive tests. Again, misnomer but anyway we're coming up on no it is friday morning at 9 a.m so i've done a thursday's episode and a friday morning's episode and this is totaling and no i've been adding to it here and there and just sit down and do another bit which is great i could probably do way more segments if I could turn this thing on and off and I fingered it out, what did I do? I downloaded something that gave me a pause feature on OBS. I'm, I'm tickled. <clears throat> so we're 133 sec. We're, we're a, a, an hour, 33 minutes, and 41 seconds right now of unadulterated Jimmy Fan and Blather. I hope you're enjoying it. And here's how the edit feature works again, or the pause feature. You just click pause here. And again, what a handy feature. Hey, Joe, um, how do your lips feel, Joe? And. That's just from one, one clip. How long does this go on, dude? That's really annoying. <laughs> Did I give away where I stole the clip from by doing it that way? <laughs> Holy lip smacking. You know, there's nothing worse than a lip smacker. <laughs> this just in. Breaking news on CHCH TV on their Facebook channel of all places is where I found it as St. Catherine's two St. Catherine's businesses have been shut down after going around the mask mandate, the, uh, the, the lockdown, the no operate for salons and spas by saying we're a film studio. We're doing podcasting and um, big middle finger to you basically. Uh, I guess they shut down, and I'm working the back door for an underground audition. But here's uh, CH, CH covering the finger quotes in the air. News. Good morning, I'm Annette Hom. Two St. Catharines hair salons that trying to get around COVID-19 restrictions have been shut down and the owners face fines of up to half a million dollars. So they had changed their business into a film studio with customers coming in, auditioning for roles while getting their hair cut. Another vaccine could soon be in production, one that is much more effective against the UK variant of COVID-19. And that strain has Ontario health officials very worried. They say even though our provincial case counts are going down. Is that the first time that you've heard the media say that the case counts are going down? 
Yes, for me, it is. What? The case counts are going down, but no, you can't reopen. You can't go back to school. You can't open your business. You can't go to work. You can't leave your house unless you're going for a walk, you're going to see a doctor, or you're going for food. Listen, I'm a gangster. I went driving around for nothing the other day. I went for an essential coffee a few days ago. And it looks like a lot of people. I went for an essential trip to Queen Street, Niagara Falls. And coughed all over that fucking place. Mind you, I'm not infected, so it doesn't matter. Even if I was asymptomatic, I wouldn't be spreading the virus as now we're talking about the asymptomatic are not spreaders. Children, not spreaders. Oh, man, this is... Uh, these are some strange days. I'm having a hard time navigating the mentality of locking down a society over the flu. Basically, that's it. What's the best comparison to what's happening? The flu. Okay, so it's a little bit more deadly than influenza. Guess what? It's just influenza. It's just a more... <laughs> SARS, whatever. Anyways, I'm no rocket socket, but we already talked about stats, and I thought it was interesting that these guys actually got shut down and uh, charged. So good for you guys. Thank you for doing that, and uh, I can't wait to see you reopen soon. Hopefully, in like as soon as this thirty days is over, when's it, when's this lockdown end? It's too long. Cases are going down. Less people are dying than ever before. Stop it. All right. So on the way out, this is Antifa protesting the sale of Andy Noe's upcoming book, Antifa Unmasked. I believe is the title. Or maybe it's just unmasked. Anyways, it's about Antifa and him being the victim of getting his brain, a fractured skull or brain hemorrhage of some sort after they attacked him for basically being a journalist on a um, in the middle of a protest. And it's not the only time he's been harassed. He got run out of Portland. Actually, he had to move because of death threats to him and his family. Andy No is uh, employed by the Post Millennial, writes for them, and um, now is an author. Speaking of which, okay, so this is a little bit. I'm just going to play the video because I turned the audio down. But this is oh no, we can let's let's hit that audio actually. <laughs> This, this is already on YouTube, so I don't think this gets me banned. Outside of Powell Books. <laughs> Somebody's dropped the end bomb. It's probably the black guy. Anyway, in the interest of time, we're at a buck 40 for this episode. I, I can't even remember where I started, but it probably started with someone, something like this. Go check out True.Tube. At some point, my broadcasts and all my social media content, well, the stuff that is normally my social media content will come from here. I'm going to be doing less and less with the mainstream uh, platforms. Well, because I'm getting run off them. Um, but also because I'm feeling like I can't continue to be part of the problem. And I don't believe in what they do, how they run their operations. So by being on their platforms kind of means I tolerate and play by the rules and let my my information get sold off to whoever. So I'm, I'm trying to wean myself off it. It's going to take a while. Uh, the website... I'm getting help, um, 
but it's in it's you know this is a project of love for this guy so you know it's not high on his list of paid jobs so go check out true dot tube if you're listening uh it's true t-r-e-w dot tube here you can find me on the fake book it's fakebook.com slash jim fannin uh, i'm not sure if the slash jim fannin show takes you to my page or not i'm also on instagram oh geez i passed a thousand followers Ooh. Instagram is Instagram.com slash Jim Fannin Show. You might try Jim Fannin there too. Don't do a whole lot of content on Insta. I do book some, um, I usually just do some clips on there. So there's me on Insta. Here's me on the Twatter. Oh, I just hit 7,000 tweets on the Jim Fannin Show. I wonder what I was at uh, at Jim Fannin. And Jim Fannin's gone. It's a su- suspended, targeted by hateful, hateful lefties. Uh, I'm not, you know, I'm hateful too, so I deserved it. I'm gone from Twitter, at least for the foreseeable future, because if you go to at Jim Fannin, it says terminated. I think I called someone. I said that they were extremely, what's the word for odd? strange out of the ordinary you know let me see (laughs) it's a what that's it's an umbrella term for sexual and gender minorities who are not heterosexual or not cisgender Original, okay, original meaning strange or peculiar. Originally. No. Why did I click Wikipedia? If I go to... Meaning? Strange. Odd. Queer, spoil or ruin. You queered it up. Oh, I said it. Oh no. See, I mean, I get that it's been co-opted by saying you are extremely queer. It doesn't mean you're a homosexual. But in the context of trashing someone on Twitter and mispronouncing their name in a way that is derogatory, using this word will get you banned forever from Twitter. Now, if you happen to be gay, the use of this, or even, even better, the F word, that's okay. But before I go any further and get banned, I'm just going to skip to my Lou. So here you can find me on Twitter at the Jim Fannin Show, at the Jim Fannin Show on Insta, at Jim Fannin on the, you know, the, the, the fake book. We broadcast live on pla- five platforms whenever I get an interview. Max Bernier is my last, well, one of my last interviews. He was pretty good. We do broadcast some of the f- um, political speeches. Nancy Pelosi was up yesterday. Where's my channel here? Let's go here. You can see exactly what we got rolling here. That was my last. Oh, my gosh. I haven't done a show in two weeks. Wow. We're up to 55, 155 subscribers. I gained uh, at least 15 over the last week. That's cool. Uh, because one of my clips blew up. If you go videos, can you do this? Like sort by uh, most popular. Cool. Uh, it's not up there yet. What? How come it's not there yet? 207. No, that's not it. This is the channel. Where is it? Uh, should be here. Because it's got... Home. Videos. 
This one. 18,000 views. Why is it not in the top? 18,000 now? We should have had... Yeah, it's still it's still on fire. That's good. Oh, it's on fire. Oh, look at this. I'm at the six. I'm getting my ass ratioed on this thing. I love it. I finally posted a video that got way more dislikes than the likes. I don't know if there's a, a club for that, but I like it. 288 comments. Cool. All right. So this is this thing's still blowing up. I'm not sure why it doesn't land there, but so I've gained a few followers and hey. You know, just as a little bit of hope to you people out there that are running YouTube channels or you're thinking about it or you're thinking about running one for your kid even better. Oh, my gosh. You can make some dough, man. All you need to do first get to 100 subscribers, then get your vanity plate. So then you can have YouTube.com slash your name, right? Or whatever the name of your channel is going to be. Then you got to get to 1,000 subs. Once you get to 1,000 subs, the money starts rolling. Once you get a viral video that hits a million views, you get paid $1,000. And and, and proportionately all the way along. So it, it is doable. I haven't spent a whole lot of time trying to replicate my old channel, but it is completely doable that if you have a channel, you can get to 100 subs, no problem. You just got to post stuff, interesting stuff, steal stuff, borrow stuff, broadcast some stuff. If you've got a niche, a niche, a, ni a niche, fill it, like fill it up. Anyways, I'm not giving advice, am I? This is us, us, me and the frog in my pocket. Go to true youtube.com slash C slash. Sometimes if you just go to youtube.com slash true T R E W tube, one word, true tube, one word. You'll come here and you'll see this. All right. Well, my day started at five 30. It is nine 43. So it's lunchtime now, I guess. I'll talk to you soon. Peace, love, hug your neighbor, and for crying out in the night, take that filthy, dirty diaper off that beautiful face of yours and try and go experience today maskless. You're not going to die. You're not going to kill anyone. I love you. I'm out. <laughs>